Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including a look at quakes and storm forecasts. We've got planetary science, polar ice, geomagnetic history, and nova evidence. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find that the last day was very quiet. The northern coronal hole is turning over the limb, the bright active region behind it, and the filament we identified yesterday have been quiet too. While we expect the solar wind to intensify later tonight, based on the northern coronal hole, it has thus far calmed in plasma pressure overnight. Geomagnetic conditions returning to quiet again. Top quake of the last week struck Tonga yesterday, blood echoes in the days before with a low overhead, and one above average in Southern California that was felt pretty solidly. There is an alert for France and Spain tonight with the low curling in. It will bring isolated severe conditions and resulting flood threats. Eyes on it as the evening and overnight hours come. And we begin the articles with a move I wish they would make in the Western world. Open access of science is a major research problem even if you've got a university behind you. We have seen the push for more free exchange of information overseas, and one can only hope it succeeds and spreads. New planetary collision scenario where they're trying to model the creation of the moon with the impactor hypothesis of formation. They determined that if this is how the moon was born from the Earth, the Earth likely lost a great amount of its atmosphere during that event, up to 60%. I prefer a different genesis for the moon, but in truth, it's an unanswered question and this is a cool looking simulation. Up next, we're looking at data from Portugal and Spain showing that modern humans arrived and spread to Western Europe earlier than believed. They seem to be stuck in 1980s science, however, in asking if Neanderthals lived in the region at the same time when we've now seen multiple examinations, declaring that it was the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion that took out the Neanderthals, which means that it's likely they were able to spread west, the modern humans that is, because the Neanderthals had just been taken out. They were so badly affected by the geomagnetic excursion, and the immediate spread of modern humans thereafter is no coincidence. Up next. We come back to the top story from our September 18th show, it's just one of the dozens of papers to say this, and it's just one of the dozens of pathways to cold we've seen from melting the polar ice. We chose this one today, specifically because while they might have the peripheral ice loss predictions correct, even while the mainland of Greenland gains ice thickness, that melt on the periphery is going to trigger that ocean shutdown we've been discussing for a while. Remember, the currents are already weakening salinity differentials amplifying, and we still await the release of the Yale-identified cold climate bomb from the Beaufort Gyre. Last but not least, a confirmation of the nearby Nova event that happened a few million years ago. They've used iron 60 and manganese for this one, and while those do indeed tell a story of a Nova at that time, they are missing the second half of the book. With the aluminum isotopes in more recent depositions and the transuranic elements in many of the most recent, we continue to rely on NOVA mechanisms for them. But since we also learned this year, magnetism entraps the NOVA dust within the remnant, we need very nearby NOVA after the planets formed and dating to the last several tens of thousands of years. The space science, the magnetic dust trapping, the isotopes found in fossil tracks and fission tracks of bone and microtectites all say it's the sun. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.